Hello everyone, today we're going to learn the basics of solving a pedigree chart. As we learn, we need to put a few things in our notes. The first is the definition of a pedigree chart. It is a table that's used to organize and predict genotypes and phenotypes, and the chart actually represents members of a family. In order to understand the symbols and the organization, we're going to watch a video by Mark Drollinger that's going to explain this to us. In the video, we learned that the boys are squares. We can see one, two, three, four, five, six boys in this pedigree. Girls are circles. We have one, two girls. Most of the time, we have two phenotypes, the recessive phenotype and the dominant phenotype. We choose to shade in the recessive phenotypes while the dominant phenotypes stay unshaded. So pedigree charts are organized in a very specific way. First, each generation of individuals is shown as a different level of the chart. Most of the time, but not all of the time, the generations will be labeled with Roman numerals. Individuals are placed on the pedigree chart from oldest to youngest. So in generation two, this individual here would be the oldest, and this individual over here would be the youngest. When people have children together, they are connected by a marriage line. We have one, two marriages in this particular pedigree. Children are connected to their parents by a child line. So we can see here there are three children that come off of this marriage line, two boys and a girl. There are two children that come off of this marriage line. This is a child line here, two boys. If we want to refer to one particular individual, we refer to them with their generation and row number. So for instance, this individual here belongs in generation one and is the second in the row. So this individual we refer to as one, two. So what would we call this individual? He is in generation two, and he is the fourth person in the row, so he would be two, four. The purpose of a pedigree in genetics is to find the genotypes of all of the individuals in the family. There are some rules that are on the left-hand side, but I'm just going to model how I would go about using those rules to solve the pedigree. We know that shaded symbols have the recessive phenotype. In order to have the recessive phenotype, they also have to be homozygous recessive. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to put the homozygous recessive genotype on each of those symbols. Everyone else in the pedigree has an unshaded symbol, which means that they show the dominant phenotype. In order to have a dominant phenotype, they have to have at least one dominant allele. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that dominant allele on all of the unshaded symbols. The second allele is unknown, so we're going to put a little dash here to indicate that this is what we need to discover. We're going to use the shaded symbols to help us again. Because we know that each shaded symbol got a little a from one parent and a little a from the other parent, this little a came from this parent. This little a had to have come from the other parent. So we're going to fill that in. So we now know that the mother is a heterozygous genotype. Now, this individual right here also has two children. And because one allele goes to each of her children from her genotype, we know she gave a little a to this child and a little a to this child, which means both of them are heterozygous as well. So individual 2-3 has now given us all the information that it can. So now we're going to take a look at individual 1-1. One, one. This individual got two alleles, one from his mom and one from his dad. However, we don't have them in the pedigree. But we do have the three children that he had, and he passed a recessive allele onto each one of them. So we know that this boy here is big A, little a, and this boy here is big A, little a, and we already know that the daughter got a recessive allele from the father. So now, person 1-1 one, one has given us all the information that he can give. Because we have no other information to draw from, 
we do not know if this individual right here is big A, big A, or big A, little a. And because of that, we're going to need to write both. This person's complete genotype remains unknown, but the pedigree is complete for the information we have. What are the genders and symbols for these two individuals? This male is generation one, person two, and this female is generation two, person three. Now let's figure out their genotypes. The shaded symbols we know are homozygous recessive, so we're gonna put the little a, little a next to their symbols. The unshaded symbols have the dominant phenotype, so we're going to put a big A blank next to each one of their symbols. Our job is to figure out what the second allele is. We're gonna use our shaded symbols to help us. Person one, generation two is homozygous dominant, and there are no parents for us to figure out, so we don't need to worry about that, but we have three children. We know that this individual gave an allele to each one of its offspring. That means that this is going to be a little a. We already see the little a here, and we're gonna have a little a here. Person one, two has given us all of the information he can. But we have one other homozygous recessive, no children here to pass an allele onto. However, in order to have a homozygous recessive, one recessive allele came from each of her parents, which means that her mother has to be big A, little a, making her heterozygous. We now know all of the genotypes of all of the members of the family. This pedigree is more complicated. It has three generations and three interconnected families, but we solve it the same way. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna fill in all of our homozygous recessive individuals. We know that all of them are shaded because they are little a, little a. That means everyone else in the pedigree is a big A something. So we're gonna put their big A right next to their symbol. And we are going to work through each one of our homozygous recessives. So we're going to start with this one right here. This one doesn't have any parents to add the genes to, but has four children. Each one of them get a little a allele from this parent, which means this is a little a. Actually, all of these are little a's. That means all of these children are heterozygous. So we're gonna move on to our next shaded symbol, which is here. This individual doesn't have any children to contribute alleles to, but has two parents that his allele came from. So one came from here and the other came from here, which means that this parent has to be a big A, little a. So we move to our next symbol, which is this one here. This one, no children again to add alleles to, but alleles came from both of her parents, but we already know their genotypes because her brother told us that information. So now we move on to our last shaded symbol, which is right here. No children to contribute alleles to, but the parents of this girl contributed both of her recessive alleles, which means that they are both heterozygous. We have no other shaded symbols to give us information. So now we look at anyone whose genotype is not complete. And because we don't know their entire genotype, we are going to put both possibilities for their genotypes next to their symbol. This pedigree chart is now complete. Now you have many practice problems that you can do. Please check your key on Schoology when you are done and ask your teacher if you have any questions.